vitamin A. The year is 1913. Researchers independently discover a fat-soluble factor essential for life, which will become known as vitamin A. It's the first vitamin to be given a letter, kicking off a century of nutritional discovery. Its most famous role is in vision. A component of vitamin A, called retinol, combines with the protein opsin to form rhodopsin, the light-absorbing molecule necessary for seeing in low light. Without it, the world goes dark. Vitamin A deficiency is the leading cause of preventable childhood blindness globally, affecting millions of children in developing nations. To fight this, scientists in 1999 developed golden rice, a genetically modified variety engineered to produce beta-carotene, a precursor to vitamin A. The recommended dietary allowance, or RDA, for adult men is 900 micrograms. This is easily attained from foods like carrots, sweet potatoes, and liver, but the dose makes the poison. A single liver from a polar bear, which accumulates massive amounts of vitamin A from its diet, contains enough of the vitamin to cause acute, fatal toxicity in a human. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is mislabeled. It isn't just a vitamin. It functions as a powerful steroid hormone that can influence over 2,000 genes in the human body. Unlike other vitamins, we can synthesize it ourselves. When ultraviolet B rays from sunlight strike the skin, they convert a form of cholesterol into vitamin D3. Yet despite our ability to make it, deficiency is a silent global pandemic, affecting an estimated 1 billion people worldwide. In the smog-filled cities of industrial Europe, lack of sunlight led to a devastating epidemic of rickets, a bone-softening disease in children. To eradicate it, the United States began fortifying milk with vitamin D in the 1930s, a public health triumph. Today, the official RDA is set at 600 international units for most adults. However, a large chorus of experts and researchers argue this number is tragically low, set only to prevent bone disease, not to achieve optimal health. They suggest that higher levels are needed for proper immune function, mood regulation, and disease prevention, leaving a huge question mark over public health policy. Vitamin E. This is the body's premier fat-soluble antioxidant. Vitamin E's primary role is to protect cell membranes, particularly the delicate fats within them, from the destructive cascade of oxidative damage caused by free radicals. It stands guard in the lipid layers of our cells. It was discovered in 1922 by researchers who found that a mysterious factor in vegetable oil was necessary for fertility in lab rats. For decades, it was hailed as a potential miracle supplement. The most biologically active form in humans, alpha tocopherol, was studied extensively in the 1990s in massive clinical trials, with researchers hoping it would prevent heart disease. The results were a major disappointment, showing little to no benefit. The hype quickly faded. Worse, subsequent analysis suggested that taking high-dose supplements over 400 IU per day may actually increase the risk of all-cause mortality. For vitamin E, it seems the benefits are found in whole foods, not in a pill. Vitamin K. In the 1930s, Danish scientist Henrik Dahm was investigating a strange bleeding disorder in chickens. He discovered a fat-soluble nutrient that was essential for normal blood clotting. He named it vitamin K, from the German word coagulation. Its role is absolute. Vitamin K activates the proteins and clotting factors that form a blood clot at the site of an injury. Without it, even a small cut could lead to unstoppable bleeding. Because newborns have low levels of vitamin K at birth, it is standard medical practice in the U.S. and many other countries to give every baby a vitamin K shot by law, preventing a rare but potentially fatal bleeding disorder. But the story has a second act. We now know there are two main forms, K1 found in leafy greens and K2 found in fermented foods in animal products. While K1 is focused on clotting, K2 has been shown to play a crucial role in directing calcium. It helps put calcium into your bones and teeth, and just as importantly, helps keep it out of your arteries and soft tissues where it can cause calcification. Vitamin C. 
Most animals on Earth can produce their own vitamin C. In a strange quirk of evolution, humans, along with other primates and guinea pigs, lost this ability due to a mutation in the GULO gene. This genetic flaw has had devastating consequences throughout human history. The deficiency disease is scurvy. It causes lethargy, rotting gums, and internal hemorrhaging. It's estimated to have killed over 2 million sailors between the 16th and 18th centuries, more than all other causes of death at sea combined. In 1747, a Scottish naval surgeon named James Lind conducted what is now considered the first modern clinical trial. He proved that giving sailors citrus fruits could cure the disease. In the 1970s, two-time Nobel laureate Linus Pauling controversially championed megadoses of vitamin C for everything from the common cold to cancer, a practice not supported by mainstream science. The official RDA for a non-smoking adult man is just 90 milligrams per day, an amount easily obtained from a single orange. B Complex Engine The B vitamins are not a single substance, but a group of eight distinct water-soluble vitamins that often work together. Think of them as the spark plugs of our cellular engines. Their primary job is to act as coenzymes in energy metabolism, helping to convert the food we eat carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into the usable energy that powers every cell in our body. Because they are so fundamental, a deficiency in any one of them can have severe consequences. A lack of thiamine, B1, in diets reliant on polished white rice leads to beriberi, a nerve-wasting disease. A deficiency of niacin, B3, causes pellagra, known as the disease of the four Ds, dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and death. In one of modern nutrition's greatest success stories, the U.S. mandated the fortification of enriched grain products with folate, B9, in 1998. The goal was to prevent neural tube defects in developing fetuses. The result was a stunning 27% reduction in these devastating birth defects, proving the immense power of a single micronutrient. Calcium. Calcium is the undisputed king of minerals in the human body. It is the most abundant, making up about 2% of our total body weight. Its storage is highly concentrated. 99% of the body's calcium is found in our bones and teeth, providing the structural framework for our entire body. But this framework is not static. We're constantly remodeling our skeleton, and our ability to build bone density has a critical window. We achieve our peak bone mass around age 30. After that, the focus shifts from building new bone to minimizing loss as we age. The RDA for most adults is between 1,000 and 1,200 milligrams per day. But consuming calcium is only half the battle. Your body cannot effectively absorb it from the gut without adequate levels of vitamin D. They are a non-negotiable partnership. One without the other is simply not enough to maintain a strong skeleton. The Relaxation Mineral while calcium's job is to contract muscles, magnesium's job is to release them. It is a critical cofactor in over 300 different enzyme systems, making it one of the busiest minerals in our body. It plays a role in everything from protein synthesis and blood glucose control to nerve transmission and regulating blood pressure. Despite its importance, an estimated 50% of the population in the United States does not consume enough magnesium. This widespread insufficiency is linked to a host of issues, including muscle cramps, anxiety, and heart rhythm problems. It's often called the anti-stress or relaxation mineral for its ability to calm the nervous system and relax smooth muscle cells. It's abundant in nature, found in dark leafy greens like spinach, as well as nuts, seeds, avocados, and even dark chocolate. Yet modern processed diets, which strip magnesium away, have left half the population running on a deficit of this essential, calming nutrient. Sodium Potassium Pump Deep inside every single cell in your body, a microscopic machine is constantly at work. It is the Sodium Potassium Pump, a specialized protein that is fundamental to life itself. Its job is to pump three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions it pumps in. This process is incredibly energy intensive, consuming up to 40% of the brain's total energy budget. 
Why? Because it creates an electrochemical gradient, like charging the tiny battery across the cell membrane. This electrical potential is what allows your nerve cells to fire, your muscles to contract, and your heart to beat. The problem is our diet. Our ancestors evolved on a diet rich in potassium from plants and low in sodium. Their estimated intake ratio was about 10 to 1 in favor of potassium. The average modern diet, high in processed foods, has completely flipped this with a ratio closer to 1 to 2 in favor of sodium. This dietary imbalance puts a constant strain on this fundamental cellular machine. Iron. Iron is the metallic heart of our blood. It is the critical component of hemoglobin, the protein in red blood cells that binds to oxygen in the lungs and transports it to every tissue in the body. Without iron, you cannot make hemoglobin. Without hemoglobin, you cannot transport oxygen. This makes iron deficiency the most common and widespread nutritional deficiency in the entire world. The World Health Organization estimates it affects more than 1.2 billion people globally, leading to anemia, fatigue, and impaired cognitive function. Not all dietary iron is created equal. Heme iron, found in animal products like red meat, is highly bioavailable, with an absorption rate of up to 35%. Non-heme iron, from plant sources like beans and spinach, is far less absorbable, at around 2 to 10 percent. But iron is a double-edged sword. A genetic disorder called hereditary hemochromatosis causes the body to absorb too much iron, leading to a toxic buildup in the organs that can be fatal if untreated. Zinc. Zinc is the gatekeeper of the immune system. It is essential for the normal development and function of immune cells like neutrophils and natural killer cells. It's also crucial for wound healing, DNA synthesis, and a healthy sense of taste and smell. Its importance was dramatically illustrated in a 1961 study of young men in Iran who were suffering from a type of dwarfism and developmental issues. The cause was traced back to a severe zinc deficiency in their diet, which was high in unleavened bread that inhibits zinc absorption. Zinc acts as a key structural component for more than 100 different enzymes. Some studies suggest that taking zinc lozenges at the onset of a cold may shorten its duration by about one day, likely by preventing the cold virus from replicating in the nasal passages. For a potent dietary dose, nothing beats oysters, which are by far the richest natural source of this essential immune mineral. Iodine. Iodine has one single, exclusive, and profoundly important job in the human body, to be used by the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. These hormones are the master regulators of our metabolism, controlling everything from our heart rate and body temperature to our rate of growth. Because it is so critical for development, iodine deficiency is the world's most prevalent yet most easily preventable cause of brain damage. In the early 1900s, a large portion of the U.S. Midwest was known as the goiter belt because the soil was iodine poor, leading to widespread thyroid enlargement or goiters and developmental issues. The solution was simple and brilliant. In 1924, the U.S. began fortifying table salt with iodine. This public health initiative effectively wiped out the deficiency in a single generation. The amount we need is minuscule, an entire lifetime's requirement adds up to about one single teaspoon. Selenium. Selenium is a trace mineral that punches far above its weight. It functions as a potent antioxidant, primarily as a component of the enzyme glutathione peroxidase. This enzyme works in tandem with vitamin E, forming a powerful partnership that protects the delicate fatty components of our cell membranes from oxidative destruction. Its presence in the food supply is entirely dependent on the soil in which the food was grown. Soil levels vary dramatically by geographic region, creating pockets of both deficiency and excess around the world. In parts of China, with extremely low selenium soil, a fatal heart condition known as Qishan disease was endemic until the population was supplemented. On the other end of the spectrum, Brazil nuts are so famously rich in selenium that they can be a source of toxicity if overeaten. A single Brazil nut can contain more than 100% of the recommended dietary allowance, a potent reminder that with trace minerals, the balance between enough and too much is incredibly fine. <laughs>